The purpose of this video is for the beginner to be able to walk up to a tree that they don't know, crack open a good book, and identify that tree quickly. In fact, we'll do that in this video towards the end. Up to that point, we're going to learn how to separate trees into four distinct categories. Uh, this will help in the identification process as well as a good way to help memorize the trees that we're learning. So before we get started, let's first define what a tree is. According to the U.S. Forest Service, a tree is a woody plant species that meets a minimum height of 13 feet. It also has a diameter at breast height, DBH, of 3 inches. DBH is a forestry term and that height is four and a half feet off the ground. So at four and a half feet, the diameter of the tree should regularly meet three inches as a minimum. Most books, tree books, I use this as the guideline. So if we start off by making sure that we have a tree in front of us, 13 feet in height, three inches in diameter, that will help greatly so we're not um, trying to identify shrubs which may not be in the book we're using. So with that, Let's get started into our categories. And these are real easy, by the way. The first category that we look at when we come up to a tree, is the tree a softwood or a hardwood? Softwoods refer primarily to those trees that have needle-like or scale-like leaves. Many people refer to them as evergreens. These are the pines, the, spur, the firs, spruces, um, cedars, but be careful with the term evergreen because there are some that are deciduous, such as bald cypress and the larches. Softwoods are also gymnosperms, and that more or less means naked seed. So think of a pine cone as an example. Hardwoods, many people refer to as the broadleaf trees or deciduous. And for the most part, many are deciduous, but there are a few that are evergreen, such as uh, sweet bay magnolia, um, the hollies. These, the seeds of angiosperms, or the hardwoods, uh, are fleshy. A very large example of that would be an apple. So again, the first category, the first thing we look at, is it a softwood or a hardwood? Now let's take a look at the next category. So the second thing we look for is the arrangement of the tree. And arrangement comes in three flavors. There's opposite, alternate, and world. What's before me is a dogwood, and it has opposite arrangements. Notice that the leaves oppose one another. And it's not just the leaves, it's the branching as well. So again, this is opposite arrangement. Leaves and branches in the structure of the tree oppose one another. Let's go take a look at another opposite. Here's another tree with opposite arrangement. This is a red maple. Again notice how the leaves are opposite of one another as well as the branching. But be careful, there can be variability even among one tree. So as you can see here, a branch has come off right here. And if you were to glance just at this area, you might think that this arrangement is not opposite. So trick here is look at more than one leaf, look at more than one branch very important that you understand that there's variability. Same thing with leaves. Some leaves can be shade leaves, which might be much larger. Some can be sun leaves, which can be much, much shorter. Again, this is the same red maple. Its arrangement is opposite, but notice that one of the branches is missing. Here it is not. So now that we've known, looked at opposite, let's go look at another arrangement. This is an example of alternate arrangement. Notice how there is not another leaf opposing this leaf. The leaves alternate from one to another. This is alternate arrangement. Branching follows the same pattern. The branching alternates. There's not a branch opposing. Again, we talked about variability. Make sure you look at more than one leaf, more than one twig, more than one branch alternate arrangement. So we've seen opposite arrangement, we've seen alternate arrangement. There is also world arrangement. Um, there's not that many trees where world arrangement is, is common, but if a plant or a tree was world, 
as an example, this is opposite in front of me, but if it had another leaf or branch coming off here or even more, that would be world. So opposite, world. So far we've looked at two categories. Is the tree in front of us a softwood or a hardwood? And what is the arrangement? Is it opposite, alternate, or world? Now the next thing we're going to look at is the composition. And composition comes in either simple or compound. The tree in front of me is a buckeye and it has compound composition. As you can see in front of um, in front of my index finger there's a bud right above the leaf stalk or the petiole. From here on this whole piece is a leaf. So as you look at the end of the leaf these five appendages are actually leaflets. This whole thing is the leaf. So in a compound tree, you have a more complex structure of the leaf. There's leaflets. This is called palmately compound. Again, the bud in front of my index finger. Everything out is the leaf. Let's go look at another example of a compound leaf. Here's another example of a compound leaf. Again, in front of my index finger, you can see a bud. Everything out from the bud, up the leaf stalk or the rachis, is the leaf. This is hickory, and as you can see, there's five leaflets. So these are not individual leaves, these are leaflets, and all the leaflets make up the leaf. This is pinnately compound. The buckeye we saw was palmately compound. This is pinnately compound. This is hickory. Now let's go look at simple composition. Simple composition. Bud, one leaf that is simple, not complex or compound with multiple leaflets. Simple composition. So far, we've looked at whether it's a tree or not, the arrangement, is it alternate, opposite, or world, the composition, is it simple or compound, and then the last thing that I like to categorize trees in is are they evergreen or deciduous. So what I have in front of me is a tulip tree, some people call it yellow poplar, and it's real easy to determine whether a tree is deciduous or not. So all you have to do is look at this year's growth or the leaves on it and go back up the twig and you can see where last year's growth was, about right between my thumb and index finger. And then years past, you can see where there was growth as well. If this was an evergreen, which it's not, it's deciduous, but if this was evergreen, you would see last year's growth still on the tree and maybe even years before it. It would still have those leaves. So, again, we look at, is it a hardwood or a softwood? Is it arranged alternately, opposite, or world? Is the composition simple or compound? And is it evergreen or deciduous? Those are the four categories.